Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and for this week's episode, we have moved from the mountains of Glacier National Park to the prairie of northeastern Montana. We're here in the town of Fort Peck to explore a fascinating local history, so stay tuned. This episode of Grand Adventure is sponsored by The Dirt Pro. Find the campsite that's right for you, either on the web or in their number one ranked mobile apps. Get extra features and functionality with an annual membership to The Dirt Pro. Try it all for free for 30 days with the promo code Grand Adventure. Almost as soon as we left our last campsite in Glacier National Park, the Rocky Mountains instantly transitioned to the northern plains of northeastern Montana. We headed eastbound across US-2, known as the High Line, just south of the Canadian border, to visit Fort Peck Lake and the Fort Peck Dam. The Fort Peck Dam is a massive four-mile-long earthen impoundment of the Missouri River built in the 1930s during the Great Depression. As a major project of the Public Works Administration, part of FDR's New Deal, at its peak, the project employed nearly 11,000 workers in the desolate eastern Montana prairie, at a time when unemployment averaged 18%. Montanans got first crack at the jobs, and many ranchers left their farms fallow for several years to work at the dam site with their families in tow. The dam is both an engineering marvel and a testament to the human spirit that we want to explore. The result is Fort Peck Lake, the fifth largest artificial lake in the U.S. at more than 130 miles long and 200 feet deep. Managed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, it has a 1,520 mile long shoreline, which is longer than the entire state of California's coastline. It lies entirely within the Charles M. Russell National Wildlife Refuge. Everything here today is all about fishing for the lake's trophy-sized walleye and northern pike. Our focus for this grand adventure, though, is on the dam construction's fascinating history, both then and now. Fort Peck Dam is probably best known for being the subject of a photograph of the spillway taken by Margaret Bork White while still under construction. That was the cover photo of the very first issue of Life magazine on November 23, 1936. Later, the photograph was used on a U.S. postage stamp. The topmost layer of soft clay was removed from the River Valley's alluvial deposits in order to found the dam on the stable sandy deposits that lay beneath atop a layer of bare paw shale. The dam needed over 125 million cubic yards of material, enough to fill more than 12 million dump trucks. Engineers opted to construct the dam using hydraulic fill, where the material used to build up the dam was dredged from nearby borrow pits, and the watery mix of river bottom sediment was piped to the dam site. There, the water would run off, leaving behind the dredged material to solidify the core of the Fort Peck Dam. This would become the largest hydraulically filled dam in the world. A shipyard was started on the site to build four electric dredges, affectionately dubbed the Fort Peck Navy by workers.
Today, the ponds created by these dredge cuts are part of the Corps of Engineers Peck Lake Recreation Complex for boating, swimming, and fishing. Deep inside, a 35 million pound steel wall prevents water from seeping underneath the dam. This wall was pounded over 160 feet deep into the shale bedrock below the dam and surrounded by an impervious clay core. Because the dredges were electric and no existing power source was located nearby, new transmission lines were erected to carry electricity to the dam construction site from a new power plant built in Great Falls, Montana, 300 miles away. The town of Fort Peck, the government town, was built in 1934 for Army Corps of Engineers personnel and men in positions of responsibility and their families during the dam's construction. Designed to be temporary, it nevertheless included a 12-store business block, 40-bed hospital, town hall, hotel, school, recreation hall, and a 1,200-seat theater. Until only recently, all buildings in Fort Peck were built by the U.S. government. And these homes built for army officers, construction managers, and supervisors are still in use today. The administration building was built in 1934 in a colonial revival style to house management operations for the construction and maintenance of Fort Peck Dam and Lake. The Fort Peck Theater was built as a temporary structure in 1934, but today is used as a permanent facility with an annual community theater program in the summer. Barracks and dormitories were built in Fort Peck to house individual workers, but families had nowhere to live. Many workers brought their families since the state gave hiring preferences to married men with dependents. In addition to Fort Peck, over 20 shanty towns sprang up nearby, most platted by the local farmer or rancher who owned the land. Among these were Wheeler and New Deal, Many of these temporary homes were later moved to farms and towns around Montana, but others were little more than wooden frames covered in tar paper and lacked the insulation to protect against the harsh Montana winters. Little stands at the town site of Wheeler today. There's even less at the town site of New Deal. As one of the key projects in his New Deal program, FDR visited the construction site twice to check on the dam's progress. It was the single largest employer of his signature New Deal. The Missouri River would flow through four diversion tunnels averaging 6,160 feet long, 
running underneath the east abutment of the Fort Peck Dam. Workers took turns cutting into the shale with coal saws. Then the material was blasted out of the tunnel, scooped into rail cars, and removed while more digging continued. The tunnels required 117 million pounds of steel and 660,000 cubic yards of concrete. Three shifts, totaling 4,000 men, worked on the tunnels day and night, removing around 4 million cubic yards of material, enough to fill half a million dump trucks. Each tunnel was designed to safely carry the entire flow of the Missouri River on its own. Today, two of the tunnels feed water to electrical generation powerhouses, while the other two were reserved for bypass flows if needed. When lake levels become too high, water is discharged through this spillway to prevent a breach of the dam. The spillway has only been used three times in the dam's history, including here in June 2011, in response to the 2011 Missouri River floods. On June 24, 1937, the temporary dike holding back the Missouri River was blasted with dynamite, and rail cars feverishly dumped fill to divert the river's flow into the tunnels. On the afternoon of September 22, 1938, as work on the dam was nearing completion, cracks appeared 30 feet below the crest in the upstream embankment's eastern end. A short time later, the upstream portion of the east end of the embankment gave way. One construction supervisor was backing his car to the west away from the advancing slide and noted that the edge of the dam's collapse was progressing to the west at a speed equal to his own, approximately 10 miles per hour. Machinery and men alike were swallowed up as 5 million cubic yards of earth slid out into the reservoir, becoming an island. Eight men lost their lives, and of those eight men, only two bodies were ever recovered, leaving six men permanently entombed in the dam. After eight intense years, construction on the Fort Peck Dam was finally completed in 1940. The dam was not intended to produce hydroelectric power when it was originally designed, but after the dam was completed, powerhouses were added to help meet the nation's growing demand for electricity. Two powerhouses were added to the dam in the 1940s and 1950s, with a nameplate capacity of 185.25 megawatts, divided among five generating units. Three units are located in powerhouse number one, completed in 1951, and the two remaining generating units are housed in powerhouse number two, completed in 1961. In the shadow of the Fort Peck Dam lies the Fort Peck Interpretive Center a cooperative effort between the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, at which visitors can explore the rich history of the Fort Peck area, from dinosaurs to dam building. Admission is free. Immediately upon entering, visitors are greeted by a life-size motto of Pex Rex, a nearly complete Tyrannosaurus Rex discovered 20 miles southeast of Fort Peck. Two large freshwater aquariums showcase native and game fish of the Fort Peck Lake and Missouri River. The Interpretive Center's wildlife exhibit features a small fraction of the present-day and historic wildlife of the refuge.
For our visit to Fort Peck, we had intended to dry camp at Duck Creek, one of the many free campsites established around the lake by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. However, a summer heat wave sent us scurrying for electrical service to run our AC units. It's even too hot to get my kayak out onto the lake. We settled in for the week at the Fort Peck Marina and Campground, where water and electric sites cost $35 per night. It's not the most charming campground, but we're staying cool. You can readily see why most folks are here. As if you needed another reminder of why you should always retract your awning when you're away from your RV, here's one. And that's before the severe thunderstorm warning advised that 60 mile per hour wind gusts were heading our way. They're a commonplace summer feature on the Great Plains. Those winds even managed to move this giant trash container. Look at the track and the gravel. Soon after the storm passed though, Ma Nature was quick to apologize. Our video sponsor, The Dirt Pro, affords RV travelers a simple way to plan their camping road trips. Choose your route, camping style, driving preferences, and find top-rated camping along the way, either on the web or via one of The Dirt's number one ranked mobile apps. Our grand adventurers have earned a free 30-day trial of all of The Dirt's pro features, including not only trip planning, but also public land and cell service map layers, steep discounts on campgrounds and select outdoor brands, offline exploration without internet access, and more, just by using the promo code GRANDADVENTURE. So what do you have to lose? Click the link below in the video description to try the Dirt Pro for free today. The COE's downstream campground is located adjacent to the Interpretive Center, just below the Fort Peck Dam along the scenic Missouri River. Nestled in a shady grove of cottonwood trees, this facility boasts 86 campsites, 71 of which have electrical hookups for $25 per night. There are no water hookups, but potable water is available on site to fill tanks. Amenities include hot showers and flush and vault toilets, a dump station, 24-hour gate attendance, 
playground areas, a volleyball court, horseshoe pits, a nature trail, and fishing ponds. A 10-site group camping area is available for family reunions or other groups, or to individual campers when not reserved by a group. In addition to a boat ramp and marina store stocked for fishermen, our stay at Fort Peck Marina includes a cozy bar and grill right on the property. The nearest town of any size is Glasgow, 17 miles away. While this may be the most brutally honest mural ever painted anywhere, Glasgow nevertheless has most rudimentary services available. In the area, has some surprising dining and brewery options too. When in Rome, do as Romans do. Here we're sampling some of the area's native walleye. Yep, more walleye, this time just a different preparation. So we hope that you've enjoyed learning all about the history of the Fort Peck Dam along with us. If you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, you're going to find the comment section, and we'd love to hear from you after each and every Grand Adventure each and every Wednesday evening. If you're not yet a Grand Adventurer yourself, this is the time. Go smash that little red subscribe button, the one right down there in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a Grand Adventure. Finally, we would be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next week, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.